Welcome back to Retro Wednesday at the Titerium Hangar. This is Mike, and today I want to talk to you about the entire full run of 72 US standard GoBots. This is going to be the beginning of sort of a series of GoBots videos I'm going to make. I'm going to talk about Super GoBots, I'm going to talk about Rock Lords, I'm going to talk about a bunch of crazy stuff that that you probably didn't even know it exists, but when you talk about this video today, there's two things I want to say. Number one, you're going to be saying, I didn't know that they made that figure, because I was saying that to myself, and you're probably also going to say, well, you really want to have two of each to display well. It does display really well with two of each. We're going to talk about each one of these. We're also going to talk about some of the artwork and card backs. So kind of like 72 micro reviews, try to keep it under an hour. Coming up. Okay, so first one we're talking about is number one, Psych Hill. Now this is also Bike Robo in the Machine Robo line. A lot of these are from Machine Robo line, and Machine Robo actually had some figures that aren't in this line. But anyway, getting into the Psych Hill, it looks pretty good. Here is his packaging art. I got a guard back. It's not in the greatest shape, but it just it's very reminiscent of back of the day. It kind of shows you three steps of changing and the back. A lot of these are going to look about the same on the back. Now, I'm not going to be converting or transforming any of these, so if I'm missing the alt mode, then I'm going to just show a picture of it. But here is the bike mode, and it never really looked like a very convincing motorcycle, but he has a lot of chrome. He looks really good. He's got this clear translucent piece up here, and then you have this motor, and I guess I didn't put a wheel in the back there. Actually, I thought I did, but anyway, it doesn't have a wheel back in the back there. And... Here he is in his bot mode, which looks really good. Now this is, of course, iconic, and he's got a lot of chrome. A lot of chrome wear on these right here. But one thing I learned that I thought was pretty interesting was that I didn't know this before, but the engine that can disconnects from there can connect to his wrist right here, and it's supposed to be some sort of like a laser cannon kind of thing. So that's something I learned on my recent journey, although I've had these for decades. It was something new to learn. Something fun, but there's Psykill. Wish we got more of these made in the Masterpiece line. So the next one is Tank, and for some reason I went along thinking this was Tank or, but it is actually only Tank. There is the card back to show it. I kind of love the art, and of course it showed, does it show both modes? It shows the modes on here. And one thing with these cards, right here next to the name is the number. So if you want to know which number your figure is, then you can look on the card back. And if you don't have a card back, you can look it up this way too, but it's also an easy way to find out which one it is. But Tank, not tank or and so in the tank mode he basically just folds in half and so he has these accessories and weapons that either clip into the bottom of his feet which is the front when he's folded in half in tank mode and then on his back or he can hold them in his robot mode so with that he does have some interesting stickers and a lot of color to him and some chrome and some blue paint and a pretty cool looking figure i always feel like uh these turn into a floppy mess and <laughs> after a while, but uh, I got a couple of them, tightened some screws, did a few things to tighten them up a bit. I got to figure out kind of how to keep these arms up, but Tank is definitely a very popular figure, popular character, and looks pretty good. Brings back lots of memories. All right, so the next GoBot we have, this one is number three, Fighter. Not Fighter, but Fighter. And so he does turn into this pretty cool jet, which, as you can see, the plastic color is different than the paint color over time. I guess it's faded and got washed out. It's got some wheels on the bottom he can roll, and some nice engine on the back, some nice chrome. He rolls nice. And so with that, here is the bot mode. Bot mode looks pretty cool. He's a good-looking dude, and he's got some articulation. Like, he can move his arm in and out due to the transformation or the conversion. And so with that, he has a bit of a butterfly. We what we call that type of articulation. And with that, he just does look very humanoid, does look very good, stands very well. And I don't have his card back, but I have a, ch a mini ChangeBot knockoff card. Lots of fun. This is what a mini change up knockoff card looks like. Number four on the list is Copter. Now, Coptor and a lot of these other ones is kind of why I was thinking Tank was Tank or and all of that kind of stuff. But here is the card back. And it's pretty good art, kind of reminiscent of time gone by. There is the transformation conversion process for Coptor's card back. And I think he does look pretty cool. 
He's a good-looking figure. He's one that we really do need a modern representation. There's not been a modern representation of him yet. And so in his helicopter mode, he does look pretty decent like a helicopter. You can expect a helicopter to look sort of like this. And I think that they did a lot of work to make it look like that. And he's got some wheels on the bottom here. He has this rear stabilizer propeller and this main propeller right here. So lots of fun with old Coptor and Coptor. And then this piece is really hard to find these days. Um, way, way harder than it was like a couple decades ago when I was collecting. Well, I was going to get another one for this guy, but I was like, ah, never mind. So he can hold his helicopter propeller it comes out and he can hold it in his hand when he transforms or converts and looks pretty good. I like the way this guy looks. He has some transparent stuff right here. And again, one of the most iconic ones that needs a masterpiece. Next up we have Loco, kind of like a locomotive. And this one is kind of interesting. He's a very simple one, pretty common. You see him a lot, but he has a lot of detail to him. He's got like red line work, with some reflective red paint on it, and he's painted in black all over except for where he's cast in black. He has some back metalized chrome for the parts down there for the wheels and all that kind of stuff. So it looks really nice. Accented with some sort of goldish color right in here. Looks really nice as a very miniature locomotive. Very realistic, very convincing. And then he turns into this robot here. Now, he's got some sort of a number on his chest, which I really don't know why, and pretty good detail on his face. Everything you'd expect for a locomotive kind of guy, pretty clean in the back. Easy transformation, he just folds in half, and that's one thing about GoBots. A lot of them have easy transformations, until we start getting to about the last 20. <laughs> some of those get a little, little complex, and not highly complex, just easily breakable. This guy is pretty simple. So next up we have Space C, and this one here is is a pretty common one, but common to be not all the way whitened and a little bit yellowed, and uh, so both of mine are in kind of rough shape, but they were ones I've had pretty much forever, so I was like, well, I don't, why should I buy another one? But uh, I might have to upgrade after, the more I look at these, when I build my display, I'm probably going to definitely want to upgrade one of these at least. But anyway, so it looks like a nice, pretty convincing shuttle, it's got some uh, vac metalized thrusters on the back and all that kind of stuff and an easy easy transformation into a robot now this robot this one here is really rough really really rough but you get the idea what it looks like in robot mode pretty good uh, kind of weak I think that you could fix some of these by just tightening screws some of the tolerance issues where they don't want to stand anymore but that becomes a problem with space C if he doesn't want to stand but pretty cool figure they do have a Super Gobot one, and it doesn't even transform anywhere near the same. It doesn't change, convert the same at all. Next up on the list, number seven is Turbo. Turbo is a really cool figure, a really cool vehicle, and in fact, my favorite Gobot they've ever made. And I like the character, I like the, the figure, I like the toy. It's a futuristic space type of car, really fun. I do like that transparent windshield of blue and looks like all kinds of gears and mechanisms going on inside i always wished that this would open up and you could put figures in there and stuff like that but of course it's, it's small it's like a matchbox car size uh hot wheels car size and with that which which is kind of cool about gobots because they stick to the same scale and all of that then he changes exactly like the cartoon so that's another thing he's exactly like the cartoon almost all of them are and with that it just feels perfect and near perfect for matching the cartoon now no articulation other than basically the arms and the head can move up and down on it on loosely but i would absolutely love if they made a perfect masterpiece representation of this guy it would be fantastic and then this really hurts my heart that action toys never made it they had a prototype Never got made. Hopefully we see one soon. But Turbo, my favorite GoBot. Next up we have Buggy Man. Buggy Man is number eight. And he is actually a cool dune buggy transforming vehicle. Looks really good. I mean, he kind of kind of looks way different than, say, Beachcomber from Transformers. But it does feel like it's in that ballpark because he's a dune buggy. It's a very nice vac metalized stuff going on in here vac metalize on the legs and some of the stuff on the bottom there and and the vac metal does rub off on the the front lights pretty easy this breaks really easy i see a lot of these broken and this is actually a pretty fragile figure so of course i'm not gonna be transforming any of these because they could break 
they could be very, very fragile and break. And when we get down to some of the later ones, I only have one, you'll see a picture, but uh, this is also one, the buggy man is one that we're going to see again. So we don't need to spend too much time on it because he has a, an orange recolor that has a different number. So some of the recolors don't have a different number. And so we'll looking, be looking at them at one point in time, but this is one of the several that got a new number. I got a number. It's number nine dumper. So here is dumper and it is a dump truck, which makes dumper sound really cool. <laughs> He's got back metal eyes up in the front and some other, just a lot of back metal on this guy all the way around. This is a very common figure. I think I'm missing a wheel. I am missing a wheel. So that's out of my wheelhouse. <laughs> So one of the things about these is you can just get one and pop a wheel off and pop, you literally can just pull a wheel off and then move it and pop it on to another one. So that's a good way to fix it if you needed to do some updating. I think I pulled a wheel off of this one to make this one complete. I don't know, something like that. But here he is in his bot mode and he looks really cool. And with it, they're, sometimes they're hard to make them stand because for whatever reason, they made this extra tab. So it would flex to go into the transforming mode when it goes into the truck mode. These break off real easy, and if those are broken off, he won't stand. So, and he has a little trouble standing now. Give him a little arms forward. Got a little sticker on the front there too, but he was standing for so long, and now he's trying to lean back, but that stumper looks pretty cool. Next up, we have Pumper. Pumper is uh, pumping. <laughs> pumping, he is a fire truck, and he is going to be the red fire engine he is going to be pumping some water hopefully and so with this one this is an extremely common figure but at the same time his little piece here is extremely rare and hard to find and after we take a look at this guy i'm going to give you a quick uh it's a life hack on how to get some of these if you wanted to to get this if you can't find this anywhere in the world uh which you probably can't really i mean unless you watch eBay and auctions and stuff all the time. You're probably not going to find this very easily, but uh, it does extend all the way out. And there is that. And then here is the figure. And again, like I say, he's really, really common, really easy to get him, really easy to get him in decent shape and all that kind of stuff. Almost impossible to get him with all of his stuff. Now, this thing here has a little handle on it as figures are worn out. It, it can hold it like for a display. It'll hold it in place if you just want to display it, but it's not going to hold for play. It's like all those, the terminology for play or display. And there he is holding it. It'll probably fall if I move him a little bit, but so let me give you the quick life hack. You go get the machine robo one, right? And you got to get it sort of new in the package. And if it's new in the package, then it will have them in it. But it doesn't just have one. The US release appears to only have one in the package from what I've seen. New in the package comes with three. So yeah, if you really, really, really want some, track down a new in the package one of him. And most people sell them for the same price as all the other ones. He doesn't really have a premium for having those three in there. Number 11 is Dozer, and I get Dozer and Crane Brain mixed up sometimes. I, 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 can't you see? Can you see? Well, we'll be talking about Crane Brain in a bit, but... So this is Dozer, and he's actually a little bit harder to get. Even just a standard figure with his little bulldozing stuff on him, he's a little hard to come by. And he, all he does is what a lot of the GoBots do. He folds in half, and he does come with some chrome on him and some nice orange and stickers and stuff like that. He looks pretty cool. He's pretty interesting. But this is actually removable. Uh, I had a hard time shoving it in there really good, but uh, this piece here is removable, so it's easily lost, and so is his little gun here. And I think he's supposed to be able to hold it. Let me see. I, yep, he can hold it. So this piece here is really hard to get. Now, I don't have a life hack on that one to get a few of them. Uh, maybe there's a Machine Robo version out there that has a few in it, but I already had one, so it wasn't the end of the world to try to track one down. But yeah, the smokestack turns into a gun, and that's Dozer. Kind of cool, still quite simplistic. An orange constructor gun. So next up we have number 12, Hans Cuff. And Hans Cuff, actually here is his card back, and you get to see him, he looks pretty cool. And you know, the animations match the figure very well on this. And then, there's the back. 
Good stuff. So anyway, this figure here is a pretty common one too. He's a police car that turns into a robot and he's featured in the show and all that kind of stuff. But his white gets scratched up really bad. Uh, and this is kind of the best condition I've found uh, two in. And his stuff doesn't really click in place for his alt mode very well. Uh, we won't worry about that. Now here he is, he actually looks pretty good. Uh, in his bot mode and he, mine has a little bit of trouble standing. I haven't figured out why just yet, but Still looks good simple transformation But this is where they start including like sliding mechanisms in these to add a little bit of complexity and a little bit of fun That is number 12 Hans Cuff Number 13 is Flytrap who is a garbage truck or a refuse truck and it even says his name on the side of it He's tiny you would think that a a garbage truck like this would be huge a much bigger figure maybe a bigger vehicle and it's not it's really tiny really really tiny and so here he is as a bot and he looks orange and blue and black on there and he's got some articulation because of his transformation but that that other ones might not have but he does for some reason his waist breaks it's die cast metal and this breaks a lot I've seen some just split in half in the middle somehow, and so with that, uh, it's kind of strange, I think, but he's a pretty cool figure, and he, you can get him to stand okay, and I do like that, I do appreciate that with figures, but nothing really fancy with this guy, this is number 13, Flytrap. Okay, next up we have number 14, Smallfoot. Smallfoot is actually a female character, a uh, popular character, definitely a character that was one of the main characters in the show. And of course the show is what most people base their memories of GoBots on. Now she did turn into a four x four truck, which really cool looking one. I don't know, was it a Nissan? I don't know, but it says four wheel drive on it. And she has this, this front guard on here, which come, it can be plugged in and uh, taken out. It's kind of a front bumper guard. And then you have these roll bars in the back here, which uh, they fall out. I think I need to apply a little heat to kind of even those out. But still, that's what it looks like in, in the truck mode. She's getting harder and harder to find with her parts. And you see her missing her tires. They are real rubber tires. Most of them have the real rubber tires on them. And she has some really shiny paint and looks really good. It's a really good looking figure overall. And uh, just, it's getting harder and harder to track her down. And so with that, I'm glad I got one in each mode. And that's pretty much all that I need. And I just noticed lately though, that it seems like the female characters are selling better now than they did back in the 80s. Next up on the list is Dive Dive. I think Dive Dive is the most common GoBot ever made, ever out of any of them there are two variants two color variations which i think the blue one is the standard and the gray one is actually a ko knockoff but then i have other people saying that no it's just a color variant and so with that i've i've had both colors for two decades so i don't really know and i don't have a preference uh i, I think i kind of like the darker uh, of the blue better than the gray but at the end of the day i have both and i'm gonna display both and it's kind of fun but it looks interesting. There's some stickers on it to kind of break up the monotony of of this kind of submarine looking thing going on. But looks pretty cool overall. And a very simple, fun, yet rewarding transformation. And he does have like ball jointed shoulders and, and, and a little bit of decent articulation because the legs can kind of move out and the arms can move. So not a bad figure for being a very common one. Make it a good one. Okay, so number 16 is Slicks, and Slicks is another one that has two variations, but it's a race car that turns into a robot, and a pretty good looking race car overall. It's kind of, maybe gives you some of a Mirage vibes, but it definitely does look a lot longer and sleeker than Mirage, and so for Transformers, and if you don't know about Transformers, then this is just GoBots. So I always kind of felt like the arms kind of stick out a bit, this I couldn't quite tighten this up in any transformation of any of them, so I was trying to figure out if there's a way I could have tightened it up just a little bit more. It kind of bows out, but aside from that, it does work pretty good. Rolls pretty well, okay, I guess, but 
here's the yellow recolor variation and i heard one of them's a ko so but then again you get it showing up saying slicks on it some of them so with all of that i just have both variations i've had both variations and i think i like the black one better though i think the black one looks cooler the color variation and breakup is more interesting in my opinion with that one and so here is the bot mode and he's got some articulation in the arms but the rest of them is more or less just a brick and that's just the way it is so anyhow there's number 16 is it number 16 slicks number 17 is blockhead i don't think a blockhead is a very popular character or a popular figure but he's actually had a remake already, so there is a remake by Action Toys out there, so I guess he's popular enough for that. He is a mixing truck, which it looks pretty cool. Tons of vag metal on him. Red and gray color breakup. Six wheels, a six-wheeler, and so his arms are kind of short and stubby in his bot mode. And with all that vag metal, it's going to reflect a bit, so we can kind of try to keep a little bit of that reflection down so you can see his face and all that. He's got a nice little sticker right here. But uh, the way he transforms, he actually adds height to him does it really add the height well as you can see it adds height in his transformation so instead of just folding out it folds out and up in a way so anyway pretty cool figure overall kind of lacking in articulation play value and all that kind of stuff but he's interesting looking with all of that vag metal chrome okay so number 18 is Road Ranger. Here is Road Ranger, and he does look pretty cool. And I think I actually have his card back, so we can kind of see his art, and that is his transformation down there. Pretty much the same thing on the back. So with this uh, Road Ranger here, he turns from an articulated uh, flatbed truck, and they say articulated because it moves back and forth like this as it rolls and that kind of stuff. And it's uh, kind of a red and blue, kind of a bit of an Optimus Prime color scheme, you know, so, so to speak, in a way. And you do have some vac metalized parts to him. And then turns into this truck. Now this one, in, it's, it's opposite. So we just saw a blockhead that folds from a short truck into a taller figure. This just goes from a long flatbed to a shorter figure, which is very interesting how they still keep all the figures about the same size. So he does have like some stickers here, vac metalized, and... The foil stickers and the vac metal just seem to complement each other. It looks pretty good overall. And he does have a little bit of more inside articulation due to his transformation and all of that kind of stuff. But this is number 18, Road Ranger. So number 19 on the list is Royal T. And Royal T is a Harrier GR, G1. G1. This is a, it's an airplane. It's a jet. It's a jet plane. And it looks pretty cool. It actually has landing gear. So there's not a whole lot of jets up to this point. There's uh, going to be some more coming up in quite a few at the very end. So anyhow, it looks pretty cool. It's a cool looking jet. And you can just tuck away the landing gear if you want into these slots. But it's nice to have it out. So he has a little bit of elevation and rolls and all that kind of stuff. He's got the nice tail fin and some decals. This transparent cockpit. And then here he is in his bot mode and he looks really good uh it, it looks really cool having him in his bot mode but there he is from the back and these wings kind of fold up so this is where you start getting i wouldn't say complex transformations but just start doing some different stuff with them that we don't see in the other ones like his feet right down here all that kind of stuff uh interesting transformation interesting figure royalty a lot of fun number 19 Number 20 on the list is the GoBot that you don't want to ask if that movie was good because he's a spoiler, but I'll, shh, he'll spoil it for you. Okay, so with that, it's probably based on his Vag Metalized spoiler as a pretty cool looking Countach type of vehicle. Uh, it says it on the sticker. I wonder if they actually got the license. I'm sure they did. Pretty cool. Uh, now with this, you start to see some fading in the plastic versus the red painted. So you see a bit of variation in the plastic and you see it in this one too. So this one here has that same kind of variation of red to the paint and it just does kind of suck, but it is what it is in his bot mode. He's real simple transformation, but he does incorporate. I think this one incorporates the sliding arms too. So there's some, a little bit of that going with it now again i don't actually transform like i transform these on screen and definitely not definitely not super gobots simply because of the fact that they are getting older and more brittle 
Oh, did you see the face there and some sticker and some cool looking stuff going on? But yeah, give me another Lamborghini Countach or any Lamborghini any day of the week. I'm a sucker for Lamborghinis. Next up we have Crasher. Crasher is another one that has variations, color variations that are different, but the same number. So this, they don't have a different number allocation to her. So she's also a female Gobot and... So you have the black one and the white one, and I think this one, because it was the cartoon, is my favorite by far. I don't know, I'm missing stickers off of the alt mode version. I have a better, another better one than that that's in the power suits. So I like to use the main cast and the power suits too, so if I can. So here's Crasher, says Crasher on the front there, and she's a pretty cool looking bot overall. The stickers do really make her pop too, so it's really nice. And she was, she's another one that's one of my favorites because she matched the animation, but I just thought it was so cool. I always think it's cool they have like a, they can open their chest up, there's like everything's inside there. Like every time they need something, they can just pull it out of their chest or they can throw a human in there, or whatever. Thought that was kind of cool, but. Uh, and then the white one here, uh, just same thing, it's just slightly different color, but yeah, Crasher is awesome and deserves lots of love in modern representations. Alright, so number 22 on the list is Screwhead. Screwhead is a futuristic drilling tank, and he is futuristic looking. He's got a drill head on the front that doesn't move, because it is his head. His feet have some sort of nice accents when it folds over. Just really cool. And then we need to take a look at this Masterpiece version of the most recent one that came out. And it's uh, really the same thing except just upgraded articulation. And uh, this still has that back metalized, which looks so good. Here he is in his bot mode. Basically a statue with movable arms. Uh, not even movable head, I don't think. Oh, I guess it does move a little bit. But it doesn't move enough to make it look like it's screwing anything or drilling anything. Yeah, he can have sort of a butterfly because of the transformation, but I'm not going to flex it too much and break him. He is pretty fragile. I see quite a few of these broken, but I usually see them with extremely worn out chrome. That's a ton of chrome to try to keep up with. This is Screwhead and number 22. Okay, so this is Blaster, another one that's one of my favorites from childhood, and number 23 is the orange variation. Now we have down the road the green variation, which is the one I prefer and the one I had as a kid, so I like that one more. But this one is still really cool. I still do like this version. And with it, uh, it's basically a missile launcher is pretty much what it is. It's an orange futuristic missile tank. And uh, with the way his arms are, you can kind of move this to launch missiles in different directions. So that would work. It's kind of cool because it has a nice reflective windshield right there. You've got some of that metalized chrome. You've got wheels on the bottom and all that kind of stuff. Nice, clean, tight design for the tank mode or missile launching mode but then he's just a really cool robot that has a little bit more articulation than the average gobot and he has some missiles that launch it's just really really cool i loved this figure back in the day i just felt like this was one of the better designed figures even though i would have liked front and back artic more articulation with the leg he did have some strange articulation these feet almost always break and the one i had for all these years was broken i had it i got a couple of them and just pieced together the few that i needed to have two of each on the shelf and displayed i see a lot of people clip them together you don't have to because he will stand with his feet Spread apart, sort of like normal, but this is Blaster. So cool. Wait till we get to the green one. Number 24 is Crane Brain. And Crane Brain is an, one that's, it's kind of interesting. Sort of like, I don't know, I kind of think of the Transformer Erector. Yeah, mine doesn't want to stand so well. So now I only have one complete, one that has the crane piece with the little hook on it. And it is adjustable to slide down and up and that kind of stuff. So you can kind of play with it the way you want but it is interesting too it has this translucent pieces in here and this is one that I, oddly enough I just didn't have I was like oh well, I gotta pick up a crane brain because I didn't have it uh knew of it and thought I had it but I guess I didn't so uh because he's kind of similar to some of the other ones that are out there but he is interesting because you could also remove this and which I'm not going to but you can remove it and you can clip to his back and other kind of stuff or just or you can leave it on there when he transforms but uh, a lot of times you, people like to take it off. Now, for the figure himself, he does have, of course, the butterfly because of the way he transforms. And he's kind of cool. He's got a little black visor going on, back metalized into some foil type of stickers there. Now, the legs are loose, so he doesn't want to stand. But you get the point. 
He's a six wheeler too, so I've got six wheels on him. Looking pretty good. Good old crane brain, lots of fun. Next up, number 25 is Leader One. Probably the most popular, well-known character from the GoBots because he is the leader, the number one leader of the, not the Renegades, the Guardians. So he does turn into this, is it an F-14 jet? I'm pretty sure somebody's gonna tell me if I was wrong. Maybe it's an F-15, I don't know, they call it an Eagle jet or something like that. So anyhow, it does look really good. It looks just like the show and all that kind of stuff. So it's, you know, we're gonna see this again when we do the Super GoBots, except it's gonna be bigger. And very similar though, very, very similar, which I kind of like consistency with that. Uh, here he is in the bot mode and just looks exactly like the show. Now, in the show, they do show more articulation all that, but they do match this guy and I think he looks great. Uh, it's getting harder and harder to find him with all of his parts. Start, stuff starts to break off and oddly enough, only so much can be swapped from one figure to another. So getting one with all of the parts is a challenge. Getting one broken is extra cheap these days though. So yep, I do like Leader One. Definitely in my top five or 10 list. Number 26 is Rest Q. And not rescue like rescue rangers or anything like that, but rest the, you're gonna take a rest and the letter Q. So this uh, is an ambulance, of course, and it's a nice white ambulance. and. Kind of in a, in, in a bit resembles a ratchet from Transformers, who knows, but still looks pretty cool. Looks really good. It got some back metalized characters in there that, that could be driving it maybe, is that what it is? And so with that, a lot of times you see the paint on this uh, kind of roughed up because there's a lot of paint on this guy. So I'm sure I've got some chips and dents and dings in mine, but I tried to get the best looking ones that I had. I think I have a bunch of these, but you know, they're... They're probably not in the best condition. These are the better two that I had out of all of them. And he's pretty common, pretty easy to get, not a hard one to get, but uh, it doesn't have a whole lot of articulation, does a little bit of butterfly because of the transformation and all that kind of stuff. But Rest Q is definitely one that it's easy to get, I guess is the best thing to say about number 26, Rest Q. Number 27 is Scooter. And this is a controversial figure in a way because he's it's either love him or hate him and I really need to put that sticker back down on him, but love him or hate him, I, I actually kind of liked the figure, uh, the character I was neutral on because this scaredy cat kind of character that's always uh, scared of what's going on, you know, Scooby-Doo and all the other ones, all the ones that are scared all the time, that's uh, what I thought of when I saw him, and so it was like the char that typical type of character that was going on right there, but anyhow, this is in a scooter mode, I, I usually could put like something like a Kinder Mask uh, Scott with a Scott and T-Bob in the scooter and it fits it perfectly. It's one of those cool things that you can do. Here he is in his bot mode and again, I thought I had that taped back down, but I have to work on that. He's got a nice foil sticker on him right there, a little sticker right here. And the transformation is pretty interesting and unique. He's one of the taller figures because of it too, or he can become one of the taller figures because you can just simply extend him Man, how long, how long has it been since I've transformed one of these? Wow, it's a long time. But yeah, you can extend them, make them a little bit taller, that kind of stuff. I still like Scooter. Some people hate them, love them, hate them. I like them. Jeepers Creepers, where'd you get those peepers? This is number 28, Jeeper Creeper. And Jeeper Creeper is a Jeep that comes with this interesting little machine gun that plugs in and he's got a star on his hood and he's got a spare tire on the back and he has these things here that break pretty easy and come off and then he has the windshield and all that kind of stuff. So a lot of stuff easily breaks on this guy and the transformation isn't the most friendly. I think I still need one more of these for my second one here. But anyway, looking at him, he's still pretty cool, the Jeeper Creeper kind of guy and I believe he's a bad guy. So why is he disguised as a Jeep? Am I right? Am I wrong? And he gets kind of flimsy and loose because of the way his transformation works and all of that. So, uh, but still he's pretty cool. I do like this character getting his gun unbroken on the bottom. That bottom tip breaks off pretty easy, but still, it's still fun to have this guy in the collection. No, he's not Hound, but he's Jeeper Creeper and he looks like an innocent guy. I think he's bad though. Number 29, Pathfinder is a female character that is a, like a UFO spaceship kind of thing right there. And 
saucer, a space saucer, and she looks pretty cool. She looks actually good in both modes. The transformation can get you. You could break her transforming her, transforming her. She does have uh, some landing gear here, some some rolling wheels on the bottom, so she can roll really well on as saucers need to do. And then here she is in her robot mode, looking pretty good, and. She has a lot of interesting stuff going on right here. I have tons of paint wear, probably because she rolls around a lot, but scraped on the concrete and that kind of stuff from back in the day. A lot of times, so a lot of times her her feet, her booties are missing, so she won't stand, and her head breaks, the wheels come up missing. So oddly enough, she's easily breakable. I just don't remember ever having issues with her in the past, but uh, looking at a lot of stuff these days, I see a lot of these that have issues, but Pathfinder is really cool, really cool looking and a very interesting character and also both modes work. Number 30 is Night Ranger and this is a blue or a white Harley Davidson. Now a lot of people are saying that this is, the white one is maybe a knockoff or something, but it says Harley robo on the white one and then this one here says night ranger so i don't know anyway i'm gonna maybe it's a knockoff maybe it's a true variant i don't know but you just see so many of the white ones there's probably more of those than there are of the blue ones so i am just going to go with it and kind of i didn't put that in place you snap that in place there so it's a cool looking motorcycle though it's got some back metal to it and it's it's like a like a road cruiser it does have little handles in here, which I don't know if the camera's picking that up at all. Handles on here, and that's kind of something that breaks pretty easy. Lots of stuff break easy on this dude. And uh, I don't think the plastic was very good on this one for whatever reason. And then here he is, like his seats turn into his arms, and there's his front wheel and his little stubby little legs. Uh, and, and I don't know what's going on with this other wheel right down here, but interesting character. Not a lot of fun. This figure doesn't look like it'd be fun at all. Other than the, unless you like breaking your figures, then that's the only fun you'd get with Night Ranger. Number 31 on the list is Spoons. We're not even halfway through all of them. We're at Spoons. Now this is a forklift, an orange forklift. Kind of got this cream chest piece that's right there. And this thing that's going on. Uh, some vac metal eyes. Looks like vac metal on the rims. If it will focus on those. Focus on those. They're sort of. Okay, so... You can actually lift this up and it goes up, which is kind of cool. So that's, it's a working, well, not really working, but a faux working forklift and gets the job done. And then the robot mode, you fold the forklift pieces up as part of the legs there. And you see a lot of the business kind of just exposed, the kibble just hanging off there. But uh, he is a pretty interesting looking figure. And I don't know why the arms won't slide up all the way. He's actually one that's kind of common. I had several of them, but, you know, missing some pieces here and there. And so I think that this is one that's easy to get, but probably not easy to get complete, but also easy to find a KO of. Now, people say that this color variant is a KO. And I started trying to swap parts between ones with these uh, orange chest versus the tan chest, and it's a different color orange and all of that. And parts do not swap. They do not work from this one to that one. Or at least they didn't for me. Maybe you're better at part swapping than I am, but I couldn't get it to work. So I think it is a KO and not just a true color variant. But there we go with number 31, Spoons. So next up we have number 32, Water Walk. And I think I might actually have... No, I don't. Do I have... No card back for this guy, but I'm not really sure why. But there's two color variations. They seem to both be originals but maybe one's a ko so i have them both display both of them and so with this you have one with a tan and an orange and you have one with the white and the blue so it's one of those seaplanes and it's kind of interesting what how this thing works is a little confusing at first how it works and operates but when it transforms the arms be split off the wings so this section of the wings become the arms which is quite an interesting transformation of this guy and the way that the tail fin actually the wings can actually help stabilize the figure to stand in standing mode so kind of fun I, i'm pretty sure it doesn't float but it does have wheels so it sort of rolls on it here is the figure and it looks pretty cool pretty interesting uh pretty common figure 
lot, so many breakage points on this one. Another one that has a ton of breakage points. But uh, there's the white one. And just looking a little bit different. A little different overall, but still a pretty cool figure. And variation, maybe the white one's a KO, I don't know. So number 33 is Flip Top, and he is a helicopter, and he does look pretty cool. Now here's the card bag, that's what the card bag sort of looks like right there, and doesn't show his transformation on this card bag, that's interesting. Uh, the transformation is on the back of it, but he is in two different colors, so I've got two different color versions of him, so I assume that it's supposed to be, but it, well, one could be a knockoff i know for sure that this dark blue one is an official one so he does have land landing gear sort of rolling on that he does have this propeller which of course can be removed and swapped out to a different one for whatever reason if you want to so cool looking got some windshield paint on there and then here he is now with this uh, i think you just kind of leave his propeller in the back and then go about your business with playing with him as a toy and he's got kind of a double barbell type of arm joint is that kind of how it's going right here and so a little bit of interesting articulation doesn't do a whole lot for play but it's there and so uh, and the legs can kind of move a little bit like so but overall i don't really think it's that much of fun of a a figure to play with but this number 33 flip top so next up we have number 34 good night 34 good night is a red old school classic roadster looking really cool mean and menacing and so with that he is a cool looking vehicle he has some chrome on his bumpers and his uh giant hood ornament going on right there but kind of a fun vehicle as robot mode this is another one that has a strange transformation it's not as straightforward as you would think but it is still a pretty cool figure and looks interesting as a figure not a whole lot of articulation but displays well on a shelf he just looks pretty cool on the shelf and there is good night have a good night next up we have blaster my favorite figure one of my favorite figures and here is a card back of him looking pretty cool and so this is where they get into later where they just didn't have the transformations plastered right on the front i guess and so with that the cross cell is different on this one too so as we get later into these you can see different figures which is not a shocker or a surprise at all but i like the green one because it's the one i had and uh and i think he's the one that was in the show i think that the green one was in the show too because when i looked up the try to find some footage of this guy this is the one that i saw in the show so anyhow that's probably why i like this one the most but it's the one I had as a kid, and it was fun. And I've already talked about this one before when he was in the all orange. But I, I bet you anything, you could swap the orange chest with this guy and the other guy and get away with it. But aside from that, I think everything else is a different color. Next up, we have Street Heat. Street Heat is number 36. He's a red Camaro Z28 hot rod. And boom, he's got a jacked up back end, some huge tires, what I think huge slicks that are going on, massive air intake going on with that engine right there, S huge spoiler in the back, uh, cool looking robot, looking mean, beefy, and buff, his stubby arms though, stubby armed boy, and so uh, he's had too many Energon treats, wait, they don't need Energon, <laughs> anyhow. Really, it's kind of a cool figure. Uh, not probably not a lot of fun to play with again, except, unless you like to roll this guy a lot. And and that looks like it'd be kind of fun. This is this is actually one that I didn't have and had to track down. So there is Street Heat. Next up, we have number thirty-seven, which is Wrong Way, and here is Wrong Way's card back. You can kind of see him, and it shows that he does keep his propeller in his chest when he is in his bot mode. And here is the transformation sequence and all that kind of good stuff for him back to a small cross cell with this guy but wrong way is a helicopter and he's a cool looking helicopter and you can fiddly though he's real fiddly you can spin this and you've got he's got his propeller on there which is really cool and you can swap it around and put it on his chest and wheels on the bottom here and here now this isn't actually a wheel though so that's just like something to help support and counterbalance and then you've got this uh, stabilizer there and a huge huge cockpit for this size of a figure now 
I guess this is what he's supposed to look like because I don't have an extra propeller for him. So that's what he's supposed to look like with his propeller on. And yeah, that's crazy. We can take that off though. He does have this nice sticker on him. Pretty cool looking overall for a figure. Still don't think he's that much fun though. I don't think he's that much fun. A little bit challenging to balance, but there is wrong way. And I always think of Tailspin, the wrong way to wrong way. Every time I hear the name, wrong way. All right, so number 38 is Scratch, and he's a gray Ford Bronco. He's got his side windows, his front windows, his moonroof painted, looking pretty cool. He's got some back metalized chrome in the front, and he's got mm, elbows in the back, knees. Elbows, knees, knees in the back? Those are knees, okay. So here he is. He looks kind of short and dumpy, though. Like, it has to do with the transformation. I know that. I understand that. But I always kind of get this one in Vanguard mixed up. But he's still interesting figure. Something Scratch. I, I guess it makes sense. You'd call this little, little dude Scratch because he's, like, kind of small and dumpy looking. <laughs> I guess that's what you'd say. He's got a little sticker right here and... His face, uh, like a like a red line and a small, small, tiny little face with small, tiny little eyes painted in there. But overall, that's number 38, Scratch. So number 39 is Orange Buggy Man. I'm not going to spend too much time on him because we already saw the blue one. And so that's just a real quick, I haven't done this much, but side by side of them. And yeah, he's one that you can easily lose and break off this piece. So... I'm just glad to have one for the alt mode that looks pretty good. And do I even have one on the blue guy? Yeah, those are hard to get intact with them. And that's really all I'm going to say. Everything else is pretty much the same. Except they started with some of these lime green and some, some of these neon colors that we're going to see in upcoming figures. Okay, so number 40 is zero. This is well past the halfway point since he is number 40. He is one of these interesting looking bomber planes in A6M. Is that what he is? Anyway, this uh, bomber plane that, that looks kind of cool. He's got these round spots on there, these decals. Uh, I'm not going to really talk about what I think they mean, but this propeller is a tri propeller, a three bladed propeller going on. It does kind of work. Got to be kind of careful with it. He does have a transparent cockpit piece. And then he's got like a silver bomb. The bomb is actually detachable too. So I see a lot of times people talk about how it has the bomb, doesn't have the bomb, or sells the bomb separately, so it can come off. That's an interesting feature, but it makes it hard to track them down later on, so that kind of sucks. But uh, let's take a look at him in his bot mode. He looks kind of strange. He's strange looking, so once we get to the last, I don't know, 20 of these, there's a lot of airplanes, and a lot of them just really strange, and I just kind of feel like he fits in with all of them really well. But he, his propeller's in the front. This thing here is spring-loaded, which is interesting. And so with that, not a whole lot of articulation. He's just really going to stand here and just basically, he's going to stand here and barely stand there. And that's about all he's going to do. But yeah, that's zero for what it's worth. Number 41 is Tux, and he's a white limousine, which I, I guess he's a cream-colored limousine. He's a yellowing with times limousine which i kind of feel like tux is similar in a lot of ways to one we just recently looked at that red good night they just kind of feel like they're cut from the same stone but tux is a pretty interesting one uh i like that look of that car i do think it looks kind of cool and he kind of wears his uh f the front bumper and all that kind of stuff the grill as his waist piece so that's interesting so another interesting strange different type of transformation and they start getting a little bit more involved as time goes by uh, try to keep him up and standing and looking good but uh, interesting looking figure overall this is tux and he's got some class number 42 is twin spin twin spin is a helicopter he is a pretty cool one. is pretty cool I think it's called a C9 helicopter. Is that what it is? Anyway, it's got a dual blade propeller. Kind of reminds me of the Tomahawk from G.I. Joe. And they can fall off. So be careful. And here it is. And really cool. Uh, I lucked out on having extra ones of these because I thought they were the ones that went with Copter back in the day when I was collecting and I wanted to have one. But it turned out it wasn't the right one for Copter. So, 
uh-oh, oops, but good thing you need two for each one of these, so, uh, it's an interesting helicopter, it does have some wheels here, and I guess a wheel there somehow, maybe that can come down, I don't know, and here he is as a robot, he's more of a statue, and he's just going to kind of stand here, his propellers can re be removed from the there and clipped on the back of his arms, and that's kind of how I see him displayed or see him showing up. He has some interesting stickers, uh, paint on him. A lot of paint that could get easily scratched with this guy. But there is Twin Spin. Number 43 is Snoop. I believe Snoop's another female character, which is interesting. And also a hard one to get because it wasn't released in the U.S. It was released in the European area. And so for that, you want to go check like eBay UK or something like that to find it. Very few show up in the US for sale. Now the thing about it is that it is a really cool one too. It kind of looks like an eye raven. So uh, with that, I have trouble getting her to stand, but really cool looking jet, like a stealth bomber, uh, sweet looking jet. And it's funny, it wasn't released in the US, but it says US Air Force on it. That is insane, but it's a cool looking figure and definitely one to go after if you track down. Definitely worthwhile. Maybe I have this misaligned. I definitely have that misaligned. Now it looks so much better with it aligned properly. Said I wasn't going to transform anything on this, so oh, but I can fix a faulty transformation. Had a little bit of movement in the arms, and I think this is one where the arms collapse in and out, so that's kind of cool. Uh, I just struggle with getting this thing to stand. Uh, looks mean and daunting. You really wouldn't tell that it's a female from <laughs> female robot from the look of it, but yeah, she's cool if you can get her to stand. And one cool thing about the way I display these, I do kind of have them set in there where they can lean back on a wall or something. If you have trouble making them stand, there's Snoop, a non-US release, one of the harder ones to find. 44 is leader one, the blue variant. And I gotta say that it's it's kind of fun to get all these different color variant of figures. They put them back out so that you could get the figure again. And I forgot to show this. This is the card back for the first one so I guess I can just show it right now so we have something else to talk about with this blue variant leader one and I think this one's actually easier to get your hands on because it came later and I guess uh, people didn't want it or something I don't know it seems like just the easier version to get versus the standard one but I don't think it's that popular I don't think that many people really want this blue colored variant leader one and that's how I felt I felt these recolored variants for the most part aside from blaster I did not want them because I wanted what I saw on the show Blaster was on the show. This guy, I never saw him blue on the show. So now we're getting the recolor version of Psykill. I guess they came out side by side. This is number 45. Psykill in, they call him the knight or the black and gray futuristic. But I, I think a lot of people think of him as neon green because he has all that green on him. Kind of like we saw with that other one. So here's his card back. And it's the same, more or less the same card back. Of course, they got rid of the bottom where it shows the transformation. You have to look at the back. And what else can you get in this wave? I guess that kind of stuff. And I think that this is cool. As an adult collector, I like this better than I did. When I was a kid, I hated this and I didn't want this. I I would I would not buy this one. I had to have the original. And no matter what it took to get it, and I had I did get the original, by the way, so it wasn't a big deal. But I saw this and I was like, you're not going to fool me into this. You're not going to fool me like Star Wars with the coins and all that kind of stuff. As a doll collector, I like it. I think it's really cool. It's interesting. It's neat. It's different. Unless it's expensive and hard to track down. Next up, we have Vamp. Number 46 is Vamp. And he turns from this crazy-looking monster-looking dude into a what they say is a futuristic car. It's a futuristic monster car, I guess. Uh, so this is one that I never liked. I didn't like it. I thought it looked goofy, and I just didn't feel like the alt mode felt like it was a thing and the bot mode didn't feel like it did much but uh, nowadays I'm glad I've got them it's cool it's just something you've seen forever but I really really like the version that they made for the super gobots a lot more so when we get in the super gobots video in a few weeks maybe a month then we're gonna take a look at that one but vamp number 46 so number 47 is Scorp. Now, I guess you can call these monster bots that we've got going on. And then we have another monster bot down the road that was a mellow way. But this is Pinter Scorp. No, nope, this one's 47 Scorp. And I I never had this as a kid. And it's oddly enough. So I, I picked one up 
and uh, it's a floppy mess, this one here, and his whatever scorpion vehicle mode, and then his scorpion bot mode is a floppy mess. This whole figure is a floppy mess. Well, maybe it's because I picked up cheap ones that were uh, loose and played with for decades, but I just, I don't know. I don't see that this figure uh, does much because he is such a floppy thing. It doesn't, nothing clicks into place right, and it feels like an act of God to get it to stand on your shelf if you could do it. But it's it's one that I've known about forever and I kind of avoided it because I just didn't think it was that cool. But some of the other monster ones are really cool. So next up is Pincher. Pincher is number 48. And this is one that I actually do think this one looks cool. It's a cool looking figure, uh, but very fragile, small, tiny, breakable pieces. And it you can break arms and wings and feet and legs and all that kind of stuff on this guy, especially with the transformation, the way a transformation goes. And so anyway, he does look cool. I do like the way he looks. I think he's interesting enough. But over here, this guy is uh, in his alt mode. It's it's like you really don't know if it's 100% there or not. Is this what it's supposed to look like? Or did I, do I, do I move the arms a little bit different? I just don't really feel like it's one of those alt modes all these monster alt modes you don't really know if it's 100 percent there except for one the one i like the most and we'll get into that but but i still think he's cool though and a cool looking figure kind of makes up for any flaws and there we go with pincher number 49 is stallion he's a blue ford mustang and i gotta tell you i drove a 88 ford mustang for so many years you are telling me this is a mustang so i'll just accept that it is but it doesn't look like my mustang so uh, anyhow, it's an interesting one. It's a cool one. He is a stallion. And this is uh, one I've had for quite a while, and I never transformed him. And so I think he's interesting as a transform transforming GoBot. Uh, and I got to admit, though, this one I thought was one of the many, like, changeables that are not really GoBots, but... And I had it in that pile. I was like, oh, it really is a GoBot. So there he is. So anyway, I don't have much more to say about number 49, Stallion. Okay, number 50 is Sparky. And 50 stands for silver. That's like the silver in marriage, wedding, all that kind of stuff. So anyway, uh, so here we are getting to number 50. He's got like, quite a bit of paint on him. Uh, really well painted. And... Oddly enough, this one's still got most of the paint on it, so it looks pretty cool. It's just a Fiero. Is that is that what it is? Sparky's a Fiero. And so with that, another one that has an interesting transformation. They start getting a little bit different as time goes by. He's got a couple stickers down here, a sticker right here, that green visor on his face. There he is on the back. Sparky's kind of another short, dumpy-looking dude, but I like the cool alt mode, and he's an interesting figure. She? Is Sparky a she? Yeah, Sparky's a she. So this is Vanguard, the one I keep getting confused for Scratch, which was, the, Scratch was a Ford, and this one is a Dodge Caravan. So, yeah, I rode around Dodge Caravan for many, many years of my life, but it didn't look like this. But this still is interesting looking. Uh, I actually look at it, and I, I see it like a SUV. I see more of like a, like maybe a Chevy kind of SUV Maybe a Suburban or something, but it's supposed to be, I guess, a minivan. So here he is. I guess that's the whole point of his name, being Van Guard. And so so part of it, it turns into these wings that are back here. And so that's sort of an interesting thing going on. He's got some stickers and stuff to make him look a little more interesting. But he's, again, mostly a brick with movable arms. And so that's what a lot of them turn out to be. But some of them get better articulation as it goes. There's Van Guard. So next up, number 52 is Heat Seeker. Heat Seeker is a jet. This is an F-16 Falcon jet, which is really cool looking overall. Uh, lots of stuff going on. You've got these giant missiles that clipped in. You've got uh, the landing gear or the wheels that they're adjustable so he can roll. And then he's got the nose cone, all that kind of stuff. You've got this rear stabilizer. He's got this back metalized rear thruster engine and kind of stuff and then in the bot mode he looks kind of cool and another one of those strange transformations actually i couldn't figure it out on my own actually because well a i don't want to break it and b i'm like what exactly is it supposed to look like when it's done so i had to kind of look up a picture of what he looks like transformed and it's like oh that's what he looks like so 
uh, loose on the feet there, but still a cool looking one. This is one of the ones I got when I was buying lots and lots, and I was like, I don't even know who this is, and threw it aside. Till now, Heat Seeker. Next up, number 53 is Stinger. Stinger is a gold Corvette, Chevy Corvette, and he's an interesting looking one, I think. I think it's he, but uh, interesting overall. It's strange how the feet kind of fold over like this and form the feet. So as they go along, they start adding a few more things. There's more articulation with these arms because they're on that ball joint. So there's a bit more you can do with that. And then you can get a wider stance and all that kind of stuff. And oddly enough, you can adjust the feet. It stands really well, really, really well. So here's the Corvette and it's got kind of a huge spoiler that starts on one side and wraps around to the other. Strange. It does have those. I remember back in the day, it was all the rage to have those whatever they're called is a, kind of the plastic kind of uh, covers over the back of your window and all that kind of stuff but yeah it does sort of resemble a corvette it's not as cool as i would think a corvette would be though but there it is 53 stinger next up is major mo he is number 54 and this mr major mo here is a nissan 300ZX, one of my favorite cars that are out there, looks pretty good. I think it's some back metal on the rims. You've got the black paint on the, it's coming apart, on the windows and the windshield and the rear and all that kind of stuff. And there's some sticker up front there to make it look cool. You do have a sticker to make a spoiler look to it. So that's kind of a cheap out, but still he, he looks pretty cool in his bot mode overall. And so with that, from the back, decent looking figure. And uh, it looks good on display. This is one, I had one of these and then I ended up picking up another one because I just thought mine wasn't in that great of shape. They both seem to be in the same shape. I don't know what I was thinking, but looks really good. Major Mo. Number 55 is Bad Boy. And I just counted, there's eight planes from here on out from number 54 to 72. So less than 20 and there's eight airplanes in it. So I'm not crazy thinking there's just a ton of airplanes with this. One here is called a an A10 Thunderbolt. Is that what this is called? And I think it's the same thing they base the rattler. It looks like a rattler, except green. It's a green rattler to me. Uh, it does is interesting. So it's it's got some wheels to roll, landing gears kind of stuff going on with it. With tons, tons of missiles that just look like you could take out a whole bunch of stuff. And then again, that's the same thing as a Rattler with a ton of missiles. Here he is in his bot mode. He's got these little stubby arms that you actually extend these back pieces to make his arms. And then it is actually cool. And I, I'm not doing transformations, but how these wings fold up into this crevice that's there. So I thought it was missing something. No, that's a crevice. And then his legs are just basically all of this, uh, strange looking dude uh, almost feels on one hand it seems clever on the other hand it seems like they cheaped out or copped out on this figure but still it's an interesting figure it's getting later in the line and this one is number 55 bad boy next up we have creepy and this is my favorite monster bot out of all the monster bots and it was a mellow way this one is super special because i waited for it for eight six to eight weeks six to eight short weeks i'm sure it was every bit of two months to get this guy in. I got the green one. And so with that, I really like him. I think mine's actually broken. I don't know, but he looks pretty cool. It's not a hard or rare figure at all. It's easy to get. And I'm really just happy that I've got this. I've had this one for decades. Not my childhood one though. I don't think, I don't think, I think I lost all my GoBots and Transformers as a kid in a garage sale. But this here is the purple one, which I guess is the standard release. But it does look more like kind of, you, you can tell what it is. It's a creature. They're not trying to turn a creature into a car or a, a speedster or something. It's it's really turning the creature into a creature. And it looks like a creature. It does the job. It's got some wheels on it. It rolls. And it's good. It's a good figure. This is the best of their monster bots. Although probably not the most popular. And one was a Mellaway. Number 57 is Tellpipe. Tellpipe is the hardest absolute hardest one to get in this toy line i don't know why I, I think he was a u.s release i don't i didn't hear that he was only an overseas release and i see an equal amount pop up from the u.s and other countries and all that kind of stuff equal of almost none uh, these are hundred dollar so. figures and so I, i've hated myself after buying them but uh then i bought another one so i guess i double hate myself for buying them i just can't see spending a hundred dollars on one of these figures although i did it so 
it's a done deal. Don't got to worry about it again. Uh, but I'm not spending 300. The black one goes for 300. It's insane. I don't understand. But so this is also called Skyline, and it is a uh, an RS Turbo 2000. But yeah, it goes by. I think the name is Skyline in. Well, I don't know why it would be that in Machine Robo. Is that what it is? But uh, th there's the car, and I'm almost terrified to mess with this thing because these cost so much and. Getting a replacement isn't even uh, about cost. It's about waiting months for one to pop up and hoping you're there to buy it when it pops up. But uh, such an interesting kind of figure. The transformation is a little bit different and a little bit fiddly and a little bit scary because you know you're, you're not going to just be able to go buy a replacement one for ten bucks. So, yep, that's this guy here, tailpipe. No accessories though. Thank goodness. Thank goodness he didn't have a special accessory like a tailpipe that turned into a gun because that would have sucked. So here's Bugsy and he's not really a monster bot. He's a bug bot, I guess you could say, but feels like he's in the realm of the monster bots. And yet another one, I don't feel like I've hundred percent got him uh, transformed right, but we'll look at the bot. Now this one gets a lot of paint chipping on his chest. So it's kind of hard to make him look good. I, I think I got still a lot of paint chipping down here. Anyway, so he's still pretty cool looking overall. I do like the orange. I do like the color breakup that they're, you know, if you just have them all in the numerical order, they have a bit of a color breakup to them, and it's an interesting look on a shelf. So I will be displaying all mine in numerical order. And uh, so this one here, that's what he looks like from the pictures. I looked a picture up online. I'm like, this still doesn't feel like, oh, yeah, yeah that's it. Yep, yep, yep. That's, that looks right to me. That looks like a perfect monster bot number 14. No. This is just whatever, I guess, it folded up into, and they're like, yeah, let's make it. So, there's Bugsy. Okay, so next we get into Blades, number 59, a flying monster truck, and uh, another one that I'm confused as heck about. Like, I am really confused about <laughs> what's it supposed to look like. I've looked stuff up. This one here I actually have seen, like, three pictures of three different configurations. I've seen this configuration. I've seen the configuration of these arms to the back. I'm pretty sure that this is the front of it uh, from what I've seen online. Then I've also seen with these other blade pieces pointed up uh, somehow, some way. I don't know. So I've seen a lot of different configurations. It just seems like these blades should do more than be out of the side. But uh, it is such a strange one. And I do kind of like the bot mode, though. The bot mode looks kind of cool. Get the face down there. Kind of looks like it's got a face of... Uh, Maybe some sort of a creature, maybe a wolf, something like that. I don't know. But then he's got these kind of claw looking pieces on the front on his arms. And then he's got the blade pieces sticking out the back. So, so still, I think the bot mode sells this one. The uh, alt mode, uh, if you ever know if you've got it right or not. Um, yeah, it doesn't. So anyway, this is 59 blades. Okay, so this is number 60 Claws. Number Claws is a blue spaceship, and it does kind of look like, a, this looks like a spaceship. Like once you're done with it, you feel like, yeah, I can see this as being a spaceship. So uh, he does have, you can tell the bottom because he has his wheels and he rolls. And that that's cool, that's a spaceship. It gets the job done. And then here he is. Now, a lot of my vac metal is rubbed off, so he's got a lot of, oh, there's his head popping up. A lot of vac metal that's rubbed off in him, so. Uh, but aside from that, he's a cool looking robot. His arms can come out of here. And I think it, I think this whole mechanism moves with the arms. So that's interesting. That can be good and can be bad, actually, to tell you the truth. And then to try to fit him on the shelf, you probably have to collapse this. You can collapse this a little bit to make him feel a little bit better on your shelf. But there is number 60, Claws. Okay, so we're getting into number 61, Hornet. And this is one I don't have a second one too. I actually thought I did. I just don't. So uh, strange that I don't, but this is Hornet. I will try to put up on the screen what the alt mode looks like, but he does look kind of cool with all these little stickers on him, yellow and red and all that kind of stuff. And in the European version, or actually the Machine Robo version is a different color. It's a different series of colors, but this guy is interesting. Oddly enough, uh, I don't really know. I don't think his alt mode looks all that interesting itself, but this guy looks pretty cool as a robot. And and it doesn't really feel like something that's part of GoBots. Like, I, I never had one as a kid. I just picked one up for real cheap just to have one. And I'm thinking, it just doesn't have the GoBots feel. But it's also interesting to have something like this in to look different. 
Well, kind of like the next one we look at, it's going to be the same way. But anyway, this one here is Hornet. Next up, we have number 62 Treads. 62 Treads is a green tank. Ah, oh, kind of like a Megatron G2, right? So here we go with this. Looks uh, pretty cool, pretty interesting. I'm wondering if that's supposed to be the front. And I've got it, had it wrong all these months. <laughs> this is another one that's sort of new to me, so I don't really know much about them. But... Uh, it's pretty interesting, cool tank. Uh, this is a harder one to find. I mean, not impossible to find, but it's uh, getting up there in price. It's like a $20 one, so uh, a lot of the figures you can get for pretty cheap, especially by lots, but this guy never seems to really show up for cheap, but, or maybe he does, I don't know. So anyhow, uh, he just doesn't really do much in the bot mode, but it is kind of cool, kind of interesting that he has a little bit more like a double joint right here for his articulation and then this thing can articulate and still shoot and pew things down as he's rolling around kind of got a johnny johnny five is alive kind of uh robot mode looking going on there but anyway this is treads don't tread on me tank treads the next go about on the list is bullseye bullseye is an interesting looking one it's a jet jet liner kind of like a commercial jet liner and uh, he's a b1 lancer and these really white ones start to yellow and tarnish over time, and uh, I'm, I'm afraid of bleaching them to try to get them back to the bright white because of all of the colors, especially the red. The red will fade in one of those baths, one of those, if you kind of bleach them and stuff. So there's a big problem with doing that with them. So I just have to kind of have conventional means to try to clean them up, make them look as good as I can. Here he is in his bottom. Now he does have this articulation in these arms, and they do slide up and down. So that's something different and definitely as they get, we're getting further along and this is one of the eight jets and it is uh, some, some differences that they do with each one of them, but too many of them have kind of this foot side thing that's going on. It makes it hard to display figures side by side and cram them on a shelf like I do <laughs> when you do it like that. But anyway, this one is Bullseye. He's actually pretty cool and challenging to get a hold of. Next up, we have number 64, Mr. Moto, and this is an interesting little tricycle, and another one that I thought was a knockoff. I thought this one was like uh, part of a changeables or something, converters, select converters or something. Turns out it really is a GoBot, and interesting, weird looking dude, and they went with some crazy ideas, and it's completely different than anything else in GoBots. This is the only figure in the 72 that even resembles this. And it's cool that they did it. I mean, I, I think it's interesting and it's cool that they went outside the norm instead of just making them all cookie cutter type of things, which which obviously they didn't with these later ones. They're all so different and strange. He is getting up there in price and expensive and uh, scoring a second one. I had to spend a little bit more. I had one from like my early 2000s and a lot that I got for next to nothing. And then the second one costs a bit more like 30 bucks. So Mr. Moto is getting more expensive. It's a Honda three-wheeler and kind of fun. Okay, so number 65 on the list is Mach 3, and so I, I'm i going to try to get it in editing in the right order. I probably won't, though, so, so you can make fun of me in the comments. But this one here is pretty interesting. It's a later version of one, and I kind of get this confused with Skyjack, but when you see them side by side, well, Skyjack looks way different, but it still has some similarities. And so with it, it's another jet, none of the eight jets that are coming up in this last set here. And it's an F4 Phantom. I don't have another one of these to have an alt mode, so I'll try to put a picture up for that. If I do, I do. I don't, I don't. But it will be nice to have that picture to put up there. And he looks pretty cool. He looks pretty interesting. Different type of transformation. Feels like a small figure. He does feel smaller than many of the other ones, but this is Mach 3. So number 66 is Man O' War. Man O' War is a... Battleship, you sank my battleship, and it's, what do they call this, an Iowa class or something like that? I don't know. If the, it says 756 on it, and it's long and skinny, and it turns into this dude. So, really interesting that just they came up with this. It's got some wheels on it so it can roll. But the thing about it is that I think one of them's a KO or they're a variant. So, and I only have the two, and I don't know which one's. I assume this one's original because it looks more correct. But this one has like red feet where this would be gray and then this one has uh like dark gray where this is lighter 
So, uh, again, I don't know, 100%, but here he is in a bot mode. And I was just, they were real cheap. I mean, if I got one that was a knockoff or something, I don't care if it's a knockoff. I just like having one in each mode. If I could get them for real cheap, like five or six bucks, it's no big deal. And it's kind of nice to have variants, KO variants. But this is Man O War. And I guess it's because the battleship is there for one thing. It's more. So next up is number 67, Ace. And getting back on track here, this is a P-51 Mustang, another airplane, uh, not a jet, but as a, a single propeller, which mine are broken, both of mine are broken. Uh, this, all these figures kind of going forward are expensive and hard to get in perfect condition. So I went with cheaper ones because if I didn't have them, I just wanted cheap ones, but kind of wish I would have been a little bit more picky on the propeller. I think a lot of people are. Swapping out parts on these is kind of hard too in these later ones. Uh, it's possible, but not the easiest thing to do. But And yeah, it's a really striking looking jet. Looks really good. Here he is in his bot mode. And I just literally just figured out how to get him to stand better with these legs to slide him into here in this slot. I'm not doing the transformations or anything, but I had the leg all the way around like, he doesn't stand. And then that is where it's supposed to go and how it's supposed to look. And I'm missing a piece off of him. I figure... I might get another one down the road to piece together one really, really good one. But uh, anyhow, this is Ace. Cool looking figure overall. Number 68 is Bolt. It is a green P-38 Lightning dual propeller airplane, which is really interesting. And it's kind of like we just saw Ace. It was an airplane and he had one propeller. So let's go ahead and one up the very next release with... Two propellers and green biplane kind of thing going on there. It does have vac metal on the top or just a reflective paint. I don't know if they actually vac metal that or what. It's shiny and reflective though. And then uh, down on the bottom he does have three wheels so he can roll and all of that. He's kind of cream colored on the bottom and uh, it's a nice looking jet. And again this is getting a little harder and harder to get one of these and especially with good propellers and all that kind of stuff. So then he literally just kind of folds in half. His whole transformation is fold in half and tuck in his nose cone. And it's an easy transformation, but very, very effective. So I find this to be a very good figure. Like overall, engineering, design, and all that. Next level four back in the 80s. So next up we have 69 Dart. And this is a Honda VF-1000R. It turns into a motorcycle, and he's kind of cool looking. Uh, probably looks cooler as a motorcycle. There's a lot of motorcycle kibble going on here, and I think you could tuck that to the back and have his arms come out either way. Whatever you think looks better is how you can display him, but either way, I think it's a, an odd-looking little guy, and I've had this guy forever. This is another one that I had that I spent next to nothing on, but I was going to get another one, but I, I don't know. I got this thing almost free in a lot and didn't even know what it was like 20 years ago. But now people want 50 bucks for this guy. So I guess uh, he's worth like 35 to 50 bucks. Insane. I don't think he's that cool, but this is dirt. Okay, number 70 is Sky Jack. So this is a gray f14 tomcat uh, more of a silver actually he's kind of pretty cool looking overall pretty cool looking plane there it is and again as these get later on they're a little bit harder to get it does have a landing gear that is retractable and then two that are just kind of set in place right there but they do have a it's a little bit more kind of articulation gonna be with this guy and here is the bot mode in the bot mode the arms have a little more articulation, so they go out and they swivel around, which is sort of part of the transformation, but also, I think, starting to engineer some sort of actual articulation on purpose. And so that gives him a little bit more he can do with his arms. The rest is pretty much just a statue. He does have this transparent cockpit area and really shiny head. So interesting looking fella here, but he doesn't have a whole lot of color breakup to him and... Yeah, not one that I really remember from back in the day at all. Number 71 is Gunner. Gunner is a MiG-21. Is that what he is? An orange MiG-21. So, uh, I don't have two. So, this is another one that's challenging. All these later ones are kind of challenging to pick up. 
and so I just barely got this one and was happy with them. I will try to put a picture up of the alt mode so you can see the alt mode also. But he's an interesting one. He actually stands pretty good, so I kind of like that. And his arms do kind of move around a bit. And he's got these stars on here. But not much exciting going on with him. Uh, it's got some missiles. That, so in, in his jet mode, it looks like he's got some missiles he could drop. I'm glad they're not supposed to be removable because they'd be easily lost. Especially with him being hard to track down anyway. But pretty cool, interesting figure. This one, I for whatever reason, I thought that his nose cone kind of... It doesn't move in and out but it looks like it would move in and out when he's in his alternate mode but still this one is gunner and it's spelled funny g-u-n-n-y-r number 72 is bent wing and this is one that i kind of got confused for zero because the alt modes look so similar but this is an f4u corsair so i don't really know what that is but Interesting looking guy. Uh, I never even knew this was a thing. This was one that existed, but I guess I had to pick one up so I could say I have a complete set. And yeah, he's he's one of the little bit more expensive, like a thirty dollar figure. And so with that, it's not really that impressive of a figure. His arms and his hands don't look like hands. His arms don't really do much. They do kind of rotate around a bit. I think his head. Nope, the head doesn't move. So really, not a whole lot going on with this guy. But at the, at the later end of it, there's a lot of planes. He's another one of the planes, and I don't know why they went so heavy on the aircrafts. Maybe because they felt like they've done everything else, and there were several other aircrafts they could use, but interesting that they did them all. I don't think he's really that great of a figure, but there you go, Bent Wing. So I hope you enjoyed this Retro Wednesday look at the first 72 or the standard 72 US released GoBots and I'm curious what you think. Did you know all these existed? Do you have all of these? Do you have some of these? Is this new to you? Was this informative? And was it a trip down memory lane like all Retro Wednesdays should be? Let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe. Tell your hanger out. Scooter, but the job here isn't over yet.